We're going to bring up my wife, uh, First Lady uh, Pamela Stonergate, to introduce uh, Congressman Lewis. And she's going to give you just a, a quick bit of tad bit of information that you may not have known. But I just want to tell you that the reason why I think that we've had uh, Commissioner Emma Darnell, Commissioner uh, State Senator Nan Oreck, and now the Honorable Congress Lewis is not for any reason but because of what for participation. Had it not been for the way y'all have come together and, and show that you care about not only your community but your city, this is, this is a result of the fruits of our labor. So thank you all very much for that. So now we're going to bring up uh, my wife, Pam, to introduce uh, Congress Lewis. Hello, Ward Four. Before we get started, I want to present this award to Congress Congressman John Lewis. Okay. What it says, City of College Park, Ward Four Community Meeting, October 18, 2017. Special guest speaker, Congressman John Lewis. Thank you. You're welcome. War for family, I have been instructed to keep it short. Not to be long-winded and just get to the facts, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Good evening, family and friends, elected officials, city directors, and staff. I am Pamela Stoner Gay, your humble first lady of War Four. I am, I am beyond proud and honored <coughs> to have this privilege to introduce Georgia's fifth congressional representative, the Honorable John Robert Lewis. Congressman Lewis was born February the 21st, 1940, outside of Troy, Alabama. He is an American politician and a prominent civil rights leader. He is the U.S. Representative for Georgia's 5th Congressional District, serving since 1987, and is the Dean of the Georgia Congressional Delegates. His district covers most of Atlanta, parts of Decatur, Ellenwood, western portions of Fulton County, which includes the city of College Park, Georgia. Lewis, who as chairman of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was one of the big six leaders of groups who organized the 1963 March on Washington, played many key roles in the civil rights movement and mission to end legalized racial segregation in the United States. He is a proud member of the Democratic Party leadership in the U.S. House of Representatives and has served as Chief Deputy Whip since 1991 and Senior Chief Deputy Whip since 2003. Lewis has been awarded many honorary degrees and is the recipient of numerous awards, nationally and internationally, including the highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom by my favorite president, Barack Obama. <laughs> On a personal note, my father, who lives in Jackson, Mississippi, was one of the original white freedom riders who played a role in the civil rights struggle that led to the passage of the 1960 Civil Rights Act that was giving everyone the right to vote. My father was beaten, threatened, and jailed and Parchment Penitentiary with John, Councilman John Lewis. How fitting that after 40 years, me, Dr. Stoner's daughter, will have the honor to introduce the very man he fought alongside of. War for, you have earned the right to have this special guest, this iconic person, this legendary man, War for you are an example nationally of how we come together, stand together in order to have things done, seen and unseen. 
Thank you, Congressman Lewis, for all you have done for us. And I just personally want to tell you I love you, and I thank you for everything that you have done, my father has done, and every freedom writer who has ever walked this face and of this earth. And I really appreciate you coming tonight. And I just want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> emotional, and you know I get a little nervous. Thank y'all. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you could have continued. <laughs> it it, it sounds very good to me. And I get emotion also. Sometimes I know some of you see me crying. I, I, I cry a little bit. When you feel it, you have to show some sign. I knew your father. Thank you. It was on the original Freedom Ride. Yes. And for the two of us to enter here tonight in College Park, Georgia, there must be a God someplace. Someplace. Most of you are too young. You, you were not even a dream. <laughs> you was not even born. <laughs> Councilman Gay. First Lady, Stoner Gay. Mr. Commissioner, members of the city council, school board, chief of police and all of the honorable appointed and elected officials. I'm honored to be here. You know, I didn't grow up in a big city like College Park. <laughs> <laughs> or East Point, or Decatur, or Atlanta, or Riverdale. I grew up in rural Alabama on a farm. My father was a sharecropper, a tenant farmer. But back in 1944, when I was four years old, and I do remember when I was four, my father had saved $300. And a man sold him 110 acres of land. My family still own this land today. <laughs> On this farm, we raised a lot of cotton and coin. Lots of peanuts. Now don't tell the people in Georgia, the peanut farmers, that I don't eat too many peanuts today. I ate so many peanuts when I was growing up. And sometimes people offer me some peanuts. I say, I, I just don't care for any peanuts today. Sometimes I would get on a flight, flying from Atlanta to Washington, or Washington back to Atlanta, and the flight attendants Say you want some peanuts. I said, no, thank you. I don't care for any peanuts. But I grew up loving peanuts. Now, some of you have heard me talk about growing up on a farm, working in the field. You don't know anything about working in the field. Picking cotton, gathering peanuts, pulling corn. And I'd be out there working, and my mother would say, boy, you need to catch up. You're falling behind. And I would say, this is hard work. And she would say, hard work never killed anybody. I said, well, it's about to kill me. <laughs> I wanted to go to school. I wanted to get an education. And I want to say tonight, if any teachers are here, thank you. It's not, I've been to two schools today. Two elementary schools. Seen a group of Girl Scouts come by the office, got down on the floor, sat on the floor with a large group of students and talked to them. 
They asked me a lot of questions. But if someone had told me when I was growing up that one day I would have an opportunity as a child, as a young guy, 15 years old, to hear Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. And three years later, meet Dr. King and meet Rosa Parks and get involved in the American Civil Rights Movement. I would say, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. I truly believe Honorable elected official, that it would be our children, our young people, and it doesn't matter whether they're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American, that will lead us, that will get us there. These young people in school today, they are so smart. They are so gifted. I hadn't heard of the internet. We didn't even have a cellular telephone. We had a party line. Some of you know what the party line is? You have to wait till the other person get on. And sometimes you can eavesdrop. But we'll come a distance. We made a lot of progress. And I hear some people saying, oh, we're going back. Much can change, but let me tell you, I've seen change. The signs that I saw when I was growing up, that said white only, colored only, white men, colored men, white women, colored women, those signs are gone. And the only place that we'll see those signs today will be in a book, in a museum, on a video. So we got to get all of our young people to take advantage of the changes and get them to stay in school and receive the best possible education. These young people will be the leaders of the 21st century. They will get us there. And we will lay down the burden of race and create what I call and what Dr. King called the beloved community. We will redeem the soul of America. I know it seems a little hard right now. It seems a little tough with some of the stuff that is coming out of Washington. I told a group earlier today it doesn't matter whether it's the city budget, Marvin, whether it's the county budget, the state budget, or the congressional budget. A budget reflect our values. The money that we spend says something about where we place in our emphasis, where we place in our treasure. We need to help our people, help our elderly, help our young people, and not leave anyone behind. We, we, have en we have enough weapons, enough bombs and missiles and guns to destroy the planet. Why are we cutting education? Why are we cutting health care? I say from time to time, we have a right to know what is in the food we eat, what is in the air we breathe, what is in the water we drink. And when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a right to say something about it. You, you have a person in D.C. today that is jumping on football players because they get down on their knees to protest. The right to protest is protected by the Constitution of the United States of America. It is protected by the First Amendment. Some of you may recall just a few months ago, members of Congress, when I started out, almost 200 of us had a sit-in on the floor of the House of Representatives. We wanted the Speaker to bring forth a piece of legislation dealing with gun violence. In our cities, in rural communities, we're losing too many people. Too many of our children, it's not safe to be in school, to go to church, to go to a mosque, to go to a synagogue. 
to go to a movie, to go to a club. There's too many guns. No one want to take people guns. But someone fighting their wives or their husband don't need a gun. We shouldn't get, make guns available to people that are mentally ill. So we got to do something about, about it. Now during the 60s, I got arrested a few times, officer. <laughs> I went to jail a few times. The first time I got arrested, I, heard, I was a student in Nashville, Tennessee. And I heard if we continue to sit in, we may get arrested and go to jail. And, and Marvin, before you were even born, Councilman Cohen, before you were even a dream or even born. <laughs> Some of us young people wanted to look what we call fresh. We wanted to look clean. We wanted to look sharp. So I heard we may get arrested. I had very little money. So I went to a used men's store and bought a used suit. A vest came with it. I paid $5 for the suit. I looked good that day. I looked clean. <laughs> And if I had that suit today, I probably could sell it on eBay for a lot of money. So hang in there. Keep the faith. And when any of you come to Washington, D.C., I hope you take the time and the opportunity to visit the new museum. I introduced the legislation to create the museum. It took me more than 15 years to get it passed. President George W. Bush signed it into law. President Barack Obama and President George W. Bush and Mrs. Bush and Mrs. Obama was there on September the 24th of last year when we opened it. It's a wonderful place. And I must tell you, as long as there is an America, that museum will be there on the mall. It tells the story of African Americans from the days we were taken from the west coast of Africa and brought here as slaves. There are more people today visiting the museum than are visiting the White House. That says something. So when you come, you need tickets, let me know. We'll get you there. You don't have to pay anything. You just need a ticket to walk through the doors. And if any of you have grandchildren, or young children, under 12, bring them to Washington. I can take them on the floor of the house. Give them my voting card and let them vote for me. They will be the youngest members of Congress. I want to thank you for all your help and for all of your support over the years. This district, the people of College Park, Fulton County, Clayton County, parts of Fulton County, the care have been very, very good to me. And I said thank you. And I will continue to try to be good to you. Thank you very much. As Congressman, as Congressman Lewis departs, and we were aware that he would have to depart, he has the other engagement. Just before I leave, I want to do something special. Dr. Torres, could you come in and just stand here for a second? Congressman, this gentleman wanted to see you tonight. And what's amazing about this, just stand up, sir. Just, just stand up right here. This is what's amazing about our, our resident right here, sir, is that last night we did a robocall to, to let the community know that Congressman Lewis would be here. And a lady called me and she says, you should take me off the, off the message because I live in Alabama. But she kept talking, she says, but I live on Lakeshore. So long story short, she says, but my husband still lives on Lakeshore. 
And I said, that's an old man that lives right there. That can't be your husband. She said, it is. And we got to talking, and I was telling her about, <laughs> I was telling her about Susan, Susan Harden, who's our oldest senior. And she said, sir, you're wrong. My husband is 99 years old. <laughs> It will be a hundred this week. We're going to move on with our agenda as Congressman Lewis departs, and thank you again, sir.